oh boy. And then later today, my X-Men 97 breakdown will go up. Then at 3 a.m., my Ripley review will go up. And then I have to wait for 24 freaking hours to pass after this live stream because of notifications. So after 3 p.m. tomorrow, uh, my Monkey Man review will go up. So, ah, why the notification problems? I wish I had gotten my X-Men 97 review up earlier, but I decided to treat myself yesterday. After I saw Monkey Man, I had gotten my Fallout screeners, and I was so excited. So um, I rewarded myself. I got myself a little pizza. I watched some uh, Fallout, and I stayed up too late. <laughs> so... Uh, I'm going to make sure that I don't do that next week. Uh, I want to try and get up early so that I can watch X-Men right away and then get the, the video up as fast as possible. All right. So, um, all right. Uh, what kind of pizza did I get, Juan? I usually like to get Hawaiian pizza, but the pizza place was almost closed. So they had very little pizza left. And uh, I, was, I was like, is this all the pizza that you have? And they're like, this is it if you want pizza. So I was like, all right, I'll take this plain cheese. And I did not have any soda, so I, I was good in that regard. But yeah, I can't talk. I'm under embargo for Fallout. And as for Monkey Man, I liked it. It was more generic than I expected, but it did have some nice uh, surprises in it. So I liked it. I liked it. You know, I don't know. That's all I'll say, because I want you to watch the review. I want you to watch the review tomorrow. It did have one really big surprise in it, which I'll talk about a little bit. Um, I thought Dev Patel handled it really well. I can't talk about Fallout, but I did step very late watching it and eating pizza, so I think that's like a pretty good sign. <laughs> All right. As a matter of fact, I should have only watched one episode because I started to fall asleep. I was so tired, and I was like, must watch second episode, must see what happens. And uh, I, got, I think I might have to rewatch it because I, I fell asleep. Okay, I'll give you one little thing. The opening to Fallout was one of the coolest things I ever saw. I was amazed. All right, that's all I'll say. Okay. Now, we were going to talk about uh, Ivan. I'm going to do an X-Men whole breakdown. All right. So we were going to talk about K. Walton. Pineapple on pizza is delicious. I don't want to hear the blasphemy. It's amazing. All right, so anyway, the Disney board meeting was this afternoon, which also slowed me down. Uh, but it ended up being so boring that it's now the last story of the day. <laughs> I mean, yay for Bob Iger. Victory. Victory was his. Uh, but, um, you know, nothing really happened. There's a little bit for us to discuss. You know, it's, it's helping to fill the stream. But Matrix 5 is still the lead story. Uh, all right, everybody, let's get started. As always, try to keep your comments and questions to the topic at hand. I will not be answering any of your questions or comments until I open up each story to questions and comments. If you want to ask me something that doesn't have to do with the stories of the day, save that till the end of the stream for the 10-minute Q&A. All right, here we go. Locked and loaded, baby. Buckle up. But keep your hands and arms inside the vehicle. Hey, Travis Croft. All right, here we go. Story number one. Boop. All right, they're making another Matrix. A friend of mine actually sent me this story while I was making my X-Men notes, and I was like, thank you, this is a good story. Uh, I'm actually very excited about The Matrix 5. Um, let me ask you guys what you think. The Matrix 4 was a tremendous flop, but that's why I'm happy about some of the changes that are being made. But I know you guys like a poll, so do you want a Matrix 5? Uh, yeah, let's do it. No, uh, and then no, put it out of its misery. And then maybe, okay. <laughs> Most people will probably vote maybe. Well, why not? All right, so this is the news. And I don't think it was reported very well because it caused a lot of problems for poor Drew Goddard. So Drew Goddard, and as many of you said when you sent me this story yourselves, you were like, it looks like he's not doing Spider-Man, and that's right. He's not doing Spider-Man. He instead went to Warner Brothers, and he said, boy, do I have a Matrix idea for you. And Warner Brothers was like, oh, do you really? Let's hear. Oh, because <laughs> they're all into IP over there now. Because, you know, of course, uh, I, I hurt my contact. I, I, I uh, got too enthusiastic. All right, so anyway... 
Uh, Wonka, Dune, Barbie. Oh, I fixed it. Okay, Wonka, Dune, Barbie. Uh, what else? Uh, Godzilla, right? They're like, yeah, we'd love to keep the Matrix going. Tell us your idea, Drew. And they loved it. They loved it! Now, it was unfortunately reported that, um, it was reported in a way that a lot of people were upset that the Wachowskis were not involved. They were like, ah, why, how horrible to do to these, you know, now the Wachowski sisters, you know, both of them transitioned uh, and went, you know, they're now uh, Lily and Lana Wachowski, with Lana Wachowski, by the way, giving one of the most wonderful speeches of all time. If only she continued to make great movies. Uh, but at least, so everybody, some people were upset that Lana Wachowski or either of the Wachowskis would not be involved. However, here's the important headline, Lana Wachowski is executive producing. So that's fine. And I also think that Warner Brothers is in the clear because they let Lana Wachowski make Matrix 4. They gave her full creative control and she pooped the bed. I mean, it was awful. So, I mean, I think that Warner Brothers is in the clear on this. You know, I mean, they let Lana Wachowski, ha Wachowski have her say. She got Keanu, Keanu, she got Carrie Ann Moss, and it was a disaster. So you're like, all right, Lana, let's just put your name on top of this. You know, it's not like Lana had to go away. You know, that makes it a little less embarrassing. I think this is more just like, let's be honest, you messed up bad. And she still gets a paycheck. She still gets a cut of the movie. So it's fine. I don't think that's a problem at all. Now, here's the big question everybody was asking. Is Keanu Reeves going to be in The Matrix 5? All right, but now before we discuss this, let me close this other poll because I got another question for you. All right, so I'm ending the poll. The large majority of you, 45% said, put it out of its misery. But that's not a majority overall. That still means that over a little over half of you are willing to watch it. <laughs> and I'd feel pretty good with that if I were... Warner Brothers and Drew Goddard. I'd be like, by the time I show you some Matrix, you know, graphics with the green going like, and you see how it looks and you hear his idea, you might be like, all right, I'll go see it. I think it's a good idea. And if he can keep his budget, also Drew Goddard made Cabin in the Woods and Battle, uh, the, uh, the uh, Bad Times at the El Royale. I think he did a real nice job on those movies. Uh, I think that he has low budgets. And if I could keep my if I could keep this movie under 100 million or 100 million, I'd definitely make it. All right, so the question is now, do you want Keanu Reeves back? Should Keanu Reeves be in The Matrix 5? Yes. No. And then cameo all right, those are your three options. Any, of course, again, anybody can vote in a poll. Anyone can vote in a poll, okay? All right, so I do not want Keanu Reeves to be in the Matrix. I love the guy. He made his fortune off of the first Matrix, and he very generously shared it with many other people who worked on the films as well. He's a really great guy. And he also has the John Wick movies, right? That's great. That's nice. But I think that this... I think that after the last Matrix movie was so awful with Keanu in it, I'm just ready for somebody new. I mean, I wouldn't even mind if they rebooted it, to be honest with you. Like, let's just try something different. Like, I, don't, I think you'd have to reboot it because as you guys are pointing out, isn't he the chosen one? Although technically Carrie Ann Moss is actually the chosen one, the way they changed it. But like, I, I just don't want to do this anymore. I mean, they had their run, they had five of them. I mean, four of them, four. I, I think it's just to bring in new people. And it'll never work if it's not a reboot. So that's what I think they should do. Ivan says, what about Keanu's son? I don't know. I don't like when they always do like someone's kid, you know? Like, I know it's tried and true, but when like Indiana Jones' this kid was going to take over for him, we were all like, oh, no, thank you. You know, like, I don't want that. I don't want it. Matrix prequel, says Dane O'Leary. Matrix, Dane O'Leary, you might have solved it. What a great idea. That's a really good idea. You know, if D D Drew Goddard walked into the office and said, how did the Matrix come to be? I'd be like, that's a great question, Drew. 
do you have an answer? And he'd be like, I do. And I'd be like, oh my God, let's make the movie. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Adam Driver's a good idea as well, Lisa. You guys have your business hat on today. I'd be like, I love it. Let's get on the phone with his agent. It's a very good idea. Hey, Mark Burns. I think a prequel. Dane, I think you might have cracked it. And that's very Drew Goddard with Cabin in the Woods. I like this idea quite a bit. All right, let me close the poll. All right, hold on. All right, so should Keanu Reeves be in The Matrix 5? 46% of you feel yes. 30, that's interesting. 34% of you will take just a cameo. And then 19% agree with me. Hmm, interesting. But yeah, you would have to have uh, Morpheus, I guess, you know. But I, well, I guess you would. I mean, how, but it's, it's been a long time by the time that they wake up Neo. So you don't even have to have those characters. It would be so early on in the process that you just have to figure out how the machines put all the humans, uh, you know, you know, it was, the, 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 the prequel is just Apple Vision Pro. <laughs> They're like, Apple Vision Pro went on sale. Although I don't even know what their sales are like, come to think of it. But hilarious. Buy Anonymous Blobfish. That's a great name. So let's see. All right, does anybody have any questions or comments about this story before we move on to the next story of the day? That's all I've got to say about the Matrix 5. Those are my thoughts. I can see a number of you would like an animated series, but I don't know if people would watch that. Brock says, I wonder if they'll have another Warner Brothers is forcing us to make another Matrix line in this one too. That was a bold move by Lana. That was bold. Especially because the movie was so bad. They were like, no one should have forced you, Lana, because you clearly didn't want to do it. Uh, Ricardo says, why would they risk making any more after the last one flopped so hard? IP, the Matrix is just such a strong IP. And I think that they, they are bringing in new talent behind the camera and probably in front of it. So I think that they, um, I think that's, that makes them feel good about it. I'm not throwing away the Matrix. It's too good an IP. And especially if someone like with Drew Goddard's caliber, fans like Drew Goddard. It's not like they gave it to somebody who nobody, who doesn't have any capital. Um, oh, Marquee, uh, IP is like a, a, is a, IP is like a brand or a product. Or it's intellectual, it's short for intellectual property. But I, I established IP means something that is like a, a story that people know. So people know the matrix. It has brand recognition. And so it's got all the buzzwords. So they're just not going to throw it away. Uh, but I think they're bringing in new people. And I think that, um, I think they're probably going to keep the budget down. So I think that that's really a, a, an important uh, element of what they're going to do. And, you know, Dane, not only is the original so beloved, but it's what changed the entertainment industry. People loved those visual effects so much that Hollywood said, what could we do to get people to have more, what, what other stories require lots of visual effects? And they said, oh, we know comic books. That's what ushered in the era of comic book movies, The Matrix. You know, uh, there might have been a comic book movie or one or other beforehand, but it was The Matrix that made everybody to, to do that. It's, 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 it's iconic. And then they did a bad, I think the second one was okay. I recently rewatched the second one and I thought it was all right. Um, but I remember the third one. I'm never rewatching that one again. And I'm never rewatching four again. It's just awful. Just awful. Hey, Corey Roberts. Welcome back. All right, let's go to the next story of the day. I think you guys are ready. All right, story number two. Okay. Boop. Uh, oh, oh, sorry. That'll be there in a second. Boop. Okay, so Moana 2. Bob Iger had a little bit of goodies for us today. We were like, oh, if you come feed, we're like, feed us, Daddy Iger, feed us. And he's like, I got something for you. All right, so he gave us this first look at Moana 2. There it is. I think it's interesting they decided to make her look older. Um, I don't know if that was necessary or not, but I thought it was an interesting choice. Uh, particularly, I think, because... Um, I think she looks grown up too, but J.A. doesn't think so. She looks older to me. It's a little bit like what they did to Tiana in the animatronic. 
for uh for the for the new ride and everybody's like that looks like her mom so i don't know uh but uh, I'm excited for, for Moana. Uh, this makes me feel a little bit better because I think the animation looks pretty good. Uh, and also, he, Bob Iger confirmed some other... Th oh, by the way, there was also one other first look. There was a very quick, brief look at Mufasa. I mean, you can't really tell anything from that. But I just wanted to show it to you. To cross my eyes and dot my T's, baby. You saw it. Okay, so there it is. That's the first look of Mufasa. Yay. I mean, I think the movie will do very well. But, I mean, they don't really show anything there. Okay. They did not mention Lin-Manuel Miranda, Danny. That's a good question. But they did say that they have gotten back Dwayne Johnson and Ahi Cravajo. They said, Bob Iger said, confirmed. We're paying them a ton of money. They're coming back. I thought it was interesting that they apparently were not going to have them voice the characters in the animated series. I'm like, why were you going to do that? That sounds stupid, but, uh, but it's fixed. But then Bob Iger also clarified that, that this is going to be, um, they're still doing the live action remake. Because he said, and you know this if you watch movie math, that Moana is a juggernaut on Disney+. Plus. So he's like, it's got tons of minutes viewed. So we're, in the, we're back in the Moana business, baby. We built this fountain that nobody quite understands at Epcot. All right, let's go back and look at the picture a little bit more so we can fully discuss it. I'll see you in a minute. All right, there it is. Ooh, full screen, baby. Almost, hold on. There we go. Aw, oh, yeah. Oh, look, she's got Maui's hook on her uh, oar. That's so cute. Is that a little heart underneath it? Oh, adorable. Uh, she looks like she's ready for adventure. So that's exciting. Uh, and I think that, you know, that's the only real takeaway. I mean, she just, she looks a little older and, uh, I'm excited about it. Uh, oh yeah. Is that a monster in the background, Ivan? I see what looks like some eyes. So she's going to go and do like, uh, I don't know. I always think of monster islands now from like uh, avatar and stuff like that. So, but yeah, so it's going to be an adventure. I told you before, it's basically about five episodes or so, a couple episodes stitched into a movie. Uh, and we'll see how it looks. I'm excited about it. I hope she wears her hair on top of her head. I have a friend with very curly hair who often does that. And uh, I, I always feel bad that I can't do it. And I thought it was really cute that Moana did it. And so I was like, oh, don't take that away. It's adorable. So we'll see how it does. I mean, I thought it was a nice first look. I didn't show any new characters, you know, but it was fine. It was fine. All right, does anybody have any questions? I mean, that's, there's not much to say about it, as you can see. Uh, you know, um, it's just a first look at Moana. So what do you guys think? Diego, I don't know if stitching a couple of episodes together is a good idea, but it's all they got. They were like, we need something for Thanksgiving. Oh, look at this just sitting here. Adam Sphere says that she looks like your neighbor. Go tell your neighbor. Your neighbor hopefully will be very flattered. You'll be like, I didn't know you were in a new Disney movie. Thanks, Aralysis, for gifting a membership. Yeah, Josh loves movies. I'm very curious to see how Moana 2 does against Wicked Part 1. I'll be very curious. Uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure her chicken is still there and everything. This is not in this photo. Kim says, I mean, I will take my nephews to it. <laughs> I think, I mean, I'd see it. I think it'll do well, you know? I am curious if it can do as well as Wicked, but I'm not totally sold on whether or not Wicked's going to do well. You know, they might just end up hurting each other, which would suck for both films. We don't need that. We want things to do well. So, no word yet on Lin-Manuel Miranda. He can't write, I don't know if he could write music. Maybe he could. For the right amount of money, he could write stuff fast enough, maybe. We'll see. All right, so let's go on to the next story of the day. Let's talk about the Disney shareholder meeting, okay? Boom, baby. Whew. What a meeting. I got to tell you, Bob Iger deserves, like, uh, he really, well, he doesn't deserve a medal because he has a huge paycheck, but he certainly earned it sitting through that. My goodness. All right, so I thought it was funny that at the end of the, of the live stream today, which had a lot of real lack of visuals, I got to tell you. I mean, it had the nice little video from um, 
uh, from with some of the announcements, which I appreciated. But I was like, this is a lot of, this is a lot of talking with no picture. All right, so he said, I appreciate everyone's interest in our company. It was such the shade. It was such a two-handed uh, comment. I thought it was hilarious because he had just sat through like, like just such aggressive questioning, clearly from the far right. Uh, and some of it I thought was very revealing, very interesting as to things that Disney is going to have in its near future. All right, so um, they had two sections where people were allowed to speak, all right? The first was they had people speaking in favor of some of the amendments. Uh, Nelson Peltz spoke, and it was weird to have Nelson Peltz come on. It was like Darth Vader came on. It was like, I have an announcement. And you were like, well, this is bizarre, okay? Uh, although Disney was very polite to him, you know, even when he ran over his time. They were, a lot of it was a little petty. They, Disney was like, oh, you're over your four minutes, Mr. Peltz. You must stop. You must wrap up. And then Nelson Peltz was like, oh, I'm very happy that I was able to make an uninterrupted statement. And you were like, dude, you went over the four minutes. Of course they're going to interrupt you. All right, so that was crazy. Uh, then, uh, after that, they had some people speak for the uh, uh, addendums. And it was revealed. One, so uh, the two addendums were uh, uh, political and charitable contributions. So people got on. One person got on for, like, the political one and was saying that Disney, like a lot of the, the usual rhetoric that you get from the far right about Disney. But then they had someone who was an anti-trans activist come on to speak for the divulsion of where money is donated. And this person apparently was upset with their, not satisfied with their transition and is planning legal action, but it seems they want to plan legal action against Disney. And the argument that they want to make is they want to say that because Disney uh, maybe donated money to that cause, that they're somehow responsible. I don't think that anybody, I don't, think, I don't even think that case would be heard because it makes absolutely no sense, uh, the, the charitable contribution, particularly because up until this point, they have been not publicly shared. So really... Uh, the only thing that really did, I think, was it tipped the hand of some conservatives who are clearly going to try and put those cases into court. And Disney's going to have to deal with that. So hopefully the legal team noticed that and was like, well, now there's something we're going to have to deal with. Uh, and so that was something that I think was unexpected. Then at the end of the whole uh, presentation, they had overall questions from shareholders, which had been submitted in advance so they had an AI lady's voice reading them out loud. Okay, she was like, mm, yeah. and it was weird to hear the AI lady voice read out some really horrific and aggressive questions, okay? And it was just like, wow, all right? Um, some of them were really, really, it was just very, it was, it was a bizarre meeting. I don't think things are gonna get a little bit easier for Disney anytime soon. So um, one question which was interesting was they said, why are you just targeting younger viewers? And I think, and you know, Bob Iger, by the way, was ridiculously polite every single time. He did the old, thank you for that question, which buys him a few minutes. Although I don't know, I think he might have answered the questions in advance because they were submitted in advance. But you know, he did the old, he did the old, thank you for your question so that he could take a moment to think about it. Uh, and then, so he said, we're not targeting younger viewers. Uh, you know, I think it's something, I think their streaming obviously targets viewers of all ages. I think it really is partially about like who's going to the movies these days. And he was like, tons of people who are older are going to see Inside Out too. And here's a clip. And I thought the clip, you know, the clips are only okay, but I do appreciate the clips. So uh, he, he was like, people are going to go see that. He's like, oh, hello, Deadpool and Wolverine is rated R. So it's, it's targeted at adults. Thank you very much. Uh, he was very polite, though. And that's right. They did highlight Emma Stone and the wins for poor things, right? He should have said that. He should have been like, it doesn't get more adult than that content, but that's not from Disney proper. And I think that's what they were discussing. I think that there's no market for movies aimed primarily at, uh, you know, older moviegoers. That's just the harsh reality of the marketplace right now. And that's why Bob Iger's not doing it. You know, I think that he's trying to make money, and PG-13 is the sweet spot. He's like, what do you want from me? Maybe some of you should go see these movies. Instead of just sitting here complaining. Uh, all right. 
Oh, uh, that's right. Josh loves movies. The first Omen is for adults. Alien Romulus is for adults. I mean, I guess these people want to see like Freaky Friday too. I guess. But I mean, come on. Uh, all right, then there was another interesting question where someone said, why aren't you doing anything about Epic Universe? Universe, this was so aggressive. They were like, Universal is opening Epic Universe and you're doing diddly squat to combat that. All right, so Bob Iger had to be very polite and he was like, now that's not true. <laughs> all right, I mean, I mean, here's the thing. It was like, it's a little true, but the real, the real issue is that he has had problems in the political arena that have kept him from being able to expand the United States parks. But he mentioned in this very presentation that they finally have fixed that. And now he said, we're gonna be able to start to announce expansions in the United States parks. He settled his beef with the board in Florida so he can get those expansions approved. So you're probably going to be hearing statements from like announcements like that very soon. And then also he pointed out <clears throat> that uh, they're about to pass the initiative in Anaheim that will allow them to really be able to expand that as well. So he said everything's going to be great. Don't worry about it. And I think that's very true. I think that that's it's good. But he did have one nice little picture here. He said, here's what Disneyland's Pandora is going to look like, a.k.a. Avatar Land. And everyone was like, ooh, I would like to go to there. Uh, and so let's take another look at it. I'll see you in a minute. Here it is. All right. Ooh. I mean, I don't know about building this in Southern California where it can get a little cold. I was like, that's a lot of water for an area that can get into the 50s. But clearly, unlike the other part that's in Disney and Animal Kingdom in Florida, this is going to be very much focused on the recent film, The Way of Water. So it looks nice. I mean, I like Avatar Land quite a bit. I'm a big fan of Avatar Land. Oh, that's right, Trisha. He announced $60 billion investment in Florida specifically. That's great. But I really like Avatar Land. I think the, the, one of the rides is only okay. You know, the boat ride is fine. It's something for you to ride while you're waiting for your, your, uh, your reservation to come up on uh, Flights of Passage, which is one of the most incredible rides ever made. And I really like the food that they serve there. Um, I think the food there is excellent. I don't know what rides are going to be there, Dory. I mean, I would be shocked if there was no Flights of Passage. I mean, I think they are going to have that there. I didn't know where you're getting that. Sorry. If... But Flights of Passage is great. Uh, and I think that the food is really good at Pandora. They have very healthy food, uh, very interesting, innovative food that actually also tastes good. And it's nice to sit in there. It's also a great place to refill your water bottle because I'm drinking water now more. I brought my own water bottle to Disney, lost it, still was at the Polynesian when I came back at guest services, lost and found. I was sure someone was going to keep it because it was so nice. I was like, that water bottle's gone, but it was there. Hey, Mika. All right, so does anybody have any questions about the Bob Iger Disney board situation? Oh, we're really zooming through today's stories, boy. Whew. Mish says, if everything lights up and glows at night, then that's cool. That's great, I agree. Vanderson Valley says, I love Universal, but Disney has opened a new attraction every year since 2017. They have. I don't like that a lot of it's the reskinning attractions, but it's still nice. I mean, as I told you, I got to be there over the summer in August, and I had an incredible time. It was just as magical as it's always been. I mean, I intentionally went at an uncrowded time. I know that it can get a little bit too crowded these days, uh, but it's great. Oh, yeah, RPW Gay Foodie says, did they get any seats on the board? They didn't. They didn't get a single seat. Disney retained all of 12, all 12 seats. Nelson Peltz only managed to get 31% of the vote. And Bob Iger, uh, who himself was uh, up for a board seat, got 94%. So everybody loves Bob. He can feel really good about it. Bob Iger, this was a really good referendum on, on his leadership. So I, he's got to feel great today. He's like, oh, baby, I did it.
Mika, that's great, but I guess we'll discuss that tomorrow. We're not going to add a new story at the last minute. Oh, let's see. Any questions about this? Steven, I think it might be every year. I don't think Nelson Peltz is going to try again. I mean, he had to spend millions of dollars on this campaign, and it didn't even come close. Hey, Jacob, thanks for joining. I like your picture. You look great. To Guy Tai, this was a public live stream event. You can listen to all Disney investor presentations publicly on the, uh, on the website. And Ben 10, D23 most certainly is happening this year. It's a mega event, a huge, huge event. And parts of it will be, I believe, live streamed. That's going to be a big deal this year. This is the real D23 this year. Uh, they have two events that are D23. Uh, thanks for gifting a membership, Danny. Um, hi, uh, PsyXE and the Tatted Savage. Welcome, ba welcome back. Uh, but, you know, last year's event was just for D23 members. But this is the presentation event, which is going to have all the news. Mish, they'll probably still do Comic-Con. They'll just do both events. And then Jared Castro says, are we going to have any major changes to leadership even though there are no changes to the board? I suspect that there will be, uh, especially if certain divisions don't turn things around. I think Bob Iger has shown a willingness to, to, to let the hammer fall. Uh, all right, so let's go to the Q&A section. Because uh, we're running so quick today, we'll do 15 minutes of Q&A. Booyah! 15 minutes of Q&A. So uh, it's 3.37. We'll just go to, to 3.45. Adam Byer says, I'm taking a trip to New York City just to see a movie at AMC Lincoln Square. Coming for a quiet place, can you recommend a good place for dinner? Medium priced. Uh, oh, that's tough. I mean, I don't know where you're staying. You mean like near? I mean, you're probably going to want to eat while you're watching the movie. There's a pretty good, like, little diner across the way, like on 67th Street, I think, right across. That's a cute little diner. I know a lot of people like going there. Um, uh, so it, there are not a ton of uh, restaurants, actually, too much around there. I mean, there's some nice stuff around Lincoln Center. Let's see here. Corey says, what about Timothy Chalamet for The Matrix? No way. He's already their Dune and Wonk guy. I wouldn't want him in any other IP for them. Yes, he says, have you seen the new look at Daredevil? Do you mean like the pictures of Punisher? Yeah, I saw that. I thought that was cute. Of the, cute. They were filming. I thought that was nice. We'll talk about Supergirl tomorrow. I need a story for tomorrow. Let's see here. Ah, uh, my pleasure, Tatted Savage. I'm glad you finally were able to become a member. Clem says, doesn't it seem like Disney is staying on the same general course and just trying to improve the performance? With linear TV declining fast, doesn't, don't they need to do something more substantial? I don't think that they are staying the course. I think that it's, a slow, it's slower to turn the boat than you would expect. I think a lot of these projects that are coming out now were already in the works beforehand. And, but I do think that Bob Iger has, you know, they've, clear, they've made it clear that they've cut some projects that you will either not know about I told you I know of some projects that were cut that were never made public. Um, and uh, I will, the only thing I'll say about it is I think that they were right to cut them. Uh, so uh, you'll never know the changes that they're making, but I can tell you, because of the information that I have, uh, they are substantial. Uh, let's see here. Jason says, put your business hat on. Society moves slowly to change. Disney is in a good position to shepherd that change and being more accepted. Jason, you always say you're not a conservative, but I got to say, you have the most conservative comments. Um, I, don't, I, think that, I think that what would be really great for Disney is to be a mix. I think Disney should reflect the world that it exists in. I think that it wants to still live in the middle space, but I think to not have activism. And I think activism is crucial. And I think Hollywood has always been an activist uh, place and has helped usher in change by introducing it to people. So I, I deeply disagree with you, Jason. Trisha says, what do you think Disney stock, why do you think Disney stock went down today? 
Maybe because it was a little boring and they didn't have any huge announcements. I mean, let's see how much it went down. Mm -hmm. uh, it went down uh, about 4% today. It's gone down about uh, $2 in the last few days. But it's not bad. I mean, when you look at like um, where it has gone in a month, I mean, it's substantial improvement. It's substantially improved. It's, you know, so I think that's great. And even better when you look at six months. Six months ago, it was uh, $79 and today it's 118. So I, I think it's fine. Oh, look at all these questions. Hold on. Uh, Isaac says, my little brother didn't like the Lion King film, so that makes me worried about Mufasa. Well, it's different people making it, Isaac. You know, it's going to be a mostly original story. Um, Barry Jenkins, I think, is a very talented filmmaker, so I, I think you could feel a little bit hopeful. Stephen Turner is right. The Smith near Lincoln Square is a very, it's about a five-minute walk from the movie theater. Great food. That's a good place to go, Adam. The Smith, the Smith Lincoln Center is a great place to go. Thank you, Stephen, for that recommendation. Carrie says expanding Magic Kingdom is absolutely a big change. Yeah, I think so, but they haven't, they haven't done it for sure yet. You know, uh, they ha they've, they've been saying they're going to do it, but they haven't made the, like the official announcement and said what they're going to do. But I would be excited. They need to do it. It's too crowded in there. Brett Crandall says, any interest in the Alan Scott Green Lantern comic that's out now? Appreciated the issue of him as an inmate at Arkham. Uh, I have not been reading that comic, Brett, but I'm so glad that you're enjoying it. Omega Level Mutant, oh, you're powerful, says, Grace, you're awesome. Ah, thank you. Are you excited for the relaunch of the X-Men comics? I'm looking forward to Gail Simone's take. I've always enjoyed, I've also been enjoying Peach Momoko's anime horror take in Ultimate X-Men. Oh, actually... You know, I, well, I don't, I'm not saying I don't think she's talented, Peach Momoko. I just haven't liked that approach to the X-Men. Uh, I did buy that first comic, and I was like, this isn't the X-Men, even though it's interesting. Um, I don't feel good about the X-Men relaunch, but I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. Colby says, hey, Grace, what do you think are, are qualifiers for a movie to be considered streaming or theatrical? For example, something like the new Roadhouse. Um, I think it depends on scope. If it seems like a small film, which to me Roadhouse does, then I think it's really something that people would prefer to have convenience at home. You know, like be like, oh, that's exciting, you know? Uh, I think that it's hard to get people to go to the theater for something that's not going to have the spectacle that makes it seem like it's worth the time and money. That to me, you know, scope and spectacle are a big part of what I think is the, the difference now. Uh, oh, Elliot, you were up to journalistic activities, which is why you're late to the stream. I love it. Dancing Dog 60 says, Grace, do you think the board game IPs will be the next big thing like Clue or Monopoly or Shoots and Ladders? What do you think? Um, you know, I, I'm sure they're trying because after Barbie, but I, I don't see that. I mean, I think it's, I don't see that being like something. I think they're, I think right now everybody's into video games. Corey says, are you prepared for the bear, the acolyte, the boys, and the house of the dragon all in June? Oh, I'm excited about it. It's going to take great discipline to make sure I go to sleep on time and get up on time. But I'm very excited about it, especially because things are so slow right now. I just go, June's coming up, man. Thank goodness. I wish they were spread out a little bit. But that's okay. I'll take it. CB, I've never done a Disney cruise. Um... Cruises scare me a little bit just because I've heard of, you know, people falling off of them. Uh, but I always am amazed at how beautiful the boats look. I watch a lot of cruise footage, but I don't actually go on them. Let's see here. Hold on. Manpreet says, I really like the new Moana look, but I wish they showed her new dress more. Uh, she looks like she's wearing the same outfit to me. Uh, I hope she does get a new outfit. It'll make, me, it'll make the poster frames easier to differentiate. Let's see here. Jason says, I'm a fan and an artist who wants the industry to work, to be here in a few years. Well, okay, Jason. I'll take your word for it. That's, you know, I think the industry will be fine. I don't think you need to worry about it. 
Uh, Trisha says, I think Universal's new theme park won't affect Disney that much because uh, people that go to Disney love Disney and will always go there. Universal will be more like a day or a two-day park. Well, they're hoping to make it a place now with this Epic Universe that you only go for the day. I got to tell you, I would really like to go to Epic Universe, but it's awfully hard to leave Disney once you're there. So my family has been thinking maybe next time we go, if Epic Universe is open, that maybe we'll go there first. So then you're going to Disney after, and then we're not sure if we're going to stay over. Um, the only reason I think that we would stay over is because you can get um, free front-of-the-line passes if you stay at one of the, some of the hotels, and those are very expensive to buy on their own. Uh, and you really need them because the lines at Universal are insane. Insane. So um, I think that's a little bit something that we're thinking about. Ah, oh, thanks, Oliver. That's very sweet of you. Martine says, do you think if Blade comes out next year, will it get undercut by Ryan Coogler's vampire movie? That's a great question. Martine, I love your photo. Uh, that's a good question. I love when you guys have yourself in your photo. I get to see you. Um, I think that the Ryan Coogler vampire movie could totally make Blade irrelevant if they're not careful. So I would not do any more work on Blade until I saw how that movie was coming together because it's just going to be a waste of their time. Uh, Matthew, I get to see you too. They should finally make a Bioshock movie. Well, let's see how Fallout does. I like it, but then, of course, I've never played the video game. Uh, let's see here. Brett Crandall says, what about Candyland? I would consider a Candyland movie for sure. Although, what about Wreck-It Ralph? They kind of already did Candyland. Justin Olivieri says, what Disney IP would you turn into a ride now that they can expand the parks here in the States? Hmm. I don't know. I like that they're making a Pirates of the Caribbean restaurant dining experience. That's fun. Um, I guess I, I don't know. I feel like the Star Wars stuff only turned out okay and the Marvel stuff only kind of turned out okay. I'd like them to focus more like on traditional Disney stuff. I'm glad there's going to be a Tiana ride. You know, maybe something for Tangled. I like the stuff that they're building. I like some of the stuff that they're doing at the overseas parks, like the Peter Pan attraction, like a new kind of Peter Pan ride. I'd love for them to bring that here. And I'd like it to us to have a bigger frozen world, maybe. Uh, Aliza says, why did the tide turn on Barbie? Uh, script direction, utterly masterful. Margot gave a career best performance. I'm not sure, you know? Sometimes people hate a winner. That's just a sad fact in life. And they might have felt that Barbie was full of too much win. So that's fine. Marco can just go counter money. Good for her. Mecky Powell says, do you think that Julia Louis-Dreyfus will bring in new fans to Thunderbolts? Oh, that's right. Bob Iger should have said that. Hello, Elaine from Seinfeld is in my new Marvel movie. Uh, I hope so. Although I didn't think she did such a great job in uh, Black Panther 2. I thought she was a little over the top. Uh, Jiko says, would you like Moana 2 to explore a romance for Moana? I don't know. I don't know. I like the idea that not every Disney princess has a romance these days. So I don't know. I'd have to, I'd have to hear the pitch. Batman, uh, you know... Disney, I would miss Fast Pass, uh, but that now Disney has Genie Plus, which you have to pay for, which is still cheaper than Universal, but you know, pretty costly itself. CCC, I wouldn't say the stock nosedived. Wandering Seth, you put yourself in your photo because of me? Oh, that's great. I can kind of see you there. Yeah, you look great. You're rocking the stash. Geek Legion of Doom says, in regards to vacation, do you ever go to historical places or more cultural hotspots? Yes, I've been to Europe several times, and I had an incredible time. Uh, I also went to, uh, obviously, see um, Versailles when I was there and, and, and all the big attractions, you know, the historical places like, you know, the Louvre and, you know, the Eiffel Tower. I've also been to, um, uh, and so I did that in France and Italy and London. I also was in London, not recently, but I've done that. Um, uh, in the United States, I've been to uh, Colonial Williamsburg. <laughs> it's been a while, but I like Colonial Williamsburg quite a bit. Uh, at least last time I was there, I thought it was fun. And then also, I feel the Henry Ford Museum in Detroit, as I've said before on the show, 
is incredible. If you're ever in Detroit, you must go to the Henry Ford Museum. I think it's an incredible experience and, and plan to spend the whole day there, especially if you go in the warm weather because they have an outdoor area as well that you can go to, which is fantastic. That is the first time I ever had, I had a scone there. They had a place that did an English tea. And I was, uh, there's two times I've been on trips and I discovered uh, condiments that I had never thought of using before. So when I went to Colonial Williamsburg when I was a kid, I got a cheeseburger delivered to the hotel room and I, I said to my mom, I was like, why is there mayonnaise on the tray from room service? And there she was like, some people put mayonnaise on their cheeseburgers, Grace. And I was like, what? So I tried it and I was like, delicious, fantastic, genius. And then when I went to, uh, to uh, Henry Ford, they had a place outside where you could eat a good British tea service. And I had, I'd always seen like the cream that they put on uh, scones. And I was always like, I don't want to just eat cream. That looks gross. Because people would always put so much on it. And I was like, you know, I guess when in Rome, as they say. So I put some jam and some cream on the scone. And I was like, amazing, amazing. So go, go to new places, try new stuff. Josh loves movies, says, Grace, what was your reaction when the Joker shot Murray? Were you shocked or did you know about that scene? Uh, oh, you also did not care for poor things. Uh, I did not know that going in and I would have been devastated to have known that going in. Uh, I thought it was an incredible moment, obviously. It's very powerful, so well done. I wish they would bring back attractions, by the way, like that celebrate film, like the great movie ride. I feel really bad that uh, Hollywood Studios lost that element. Uh, making everybody want a cheeseburger, huh? Delicious. All right. Yeah, it is raining outside, as you can see. Uh, this water will dry, but it's, it's creating a crazy effect behind me today. Riley, I saw those Alan Richardson pictures. His, his publicist did a nice job. You better be careful, though. He's going to start to seem too, like, CWE. B. Sponge says, Dwayne Johnson has two movies coming out in November, Moana 2 and Red 1. And I got to tell you, I'm looking forward to both of them. Uh, Zay, I haven't heard anything about Snow White recently. I heard some tea about, uh, I don't want to ruin the movie. I heard some very good Superman tea today. Hmm, do you guys want to hear it? I'm not going to tell you the whole thing outright because I, I don't want to ruin the movie. Because I just told you about being surprised, about how great it is to be surprised. Hmm. I'll just say that I got further confirmation that I was correct that Lex Luthor villainizes Superman, and that's, is the, that's what's causing the tension in the story. Um, I know how he does it, but I'm not going to tell you because I don't want to ruin the movie. So... But that's correct, that everybody thinks Superman is evil because Lex Luthor is behind it. And so I think that's going to create a lot of fights. And I got to tell you, the movie sounds like it might be okay, maybe even good. So we'll see. I'm not confirming or denying any rumors. But I was the first to report that Superman would be villain, vilified by Lex Luthor. Just saying. Did I miss somebody's super chat? Paul. Oh, between Alien, Romulus, Deadpool 3, and Joker 2, this is a great year for R-rated films. If they will, do you think studios could make more commercial R-rated movies? Let's see. You know, I think that alone is amazing already to have those three. Okay. All right, everybody, shout out time. Where are you? What are you doing? Did I miss these other story questions? Hold on. The Fawn says, how do you think James Cameron will make Avatar 3 even more epic than the first two? Oh, well, he said he's going to have fire, Navi. So I'm excited for that. And he said, some Navi are jerks. So let's do that. All right, I got everybody's questions. All right, what are you doing? Let me say hi to you. What is going on? 
I Heart Movies is in Ohio about to watch The Boys Season 3. Oh, you're moving fast through it, I Heart Movies. That's exciting. Ooh, Cat Shack is booking a holiday in Barcelona. Ooh, exciting. Let's see here. Michael says, like most of us, I think I'm going to get a cheeseburger. Don't forget the mayo. Gramos says in Atlanta trying to figure out how to do some coding. Oh, that's cool. I don't not know how to do coding. Uh, Elia says, you can fire my Navi. Ooh, rawr. Let's see here. Senior Lullaby is playing the new C Call of Duty season. I know what that is. Ah, I'm learning about video games, slowly but surely. Newswriter22 says, trying to catch two different deadlines by the end of the day while watching the live stream. I, I gave you a second win, Newswriter22. <laughs> I put some wind in your sails, man. You need to take a break. It's, it's okay. I'm so glad I could help. Let's see here. Dancing Dog 60 is also not doing their work in Boston and watching BTT instead. You know, you got a blue sky sometimes, man. You got to do it. I'm so glad that you want a blue sky with me. Wondering Life, I'm so sorry to hear that you're sick, but I'm glad, I'm glad you were taking care of yourself. Slow your roll. Uh, Junior 6288 is still at work in Kentucky. And Trisha says, watching you while waiting for my Whole Food. What's your Whole Foods? Are you getting Whole Foods? Sensation is going out for a stroll right after the stream. Oh, that's delightful. Uh, let's see here. Uh, J.A., my X-Men breakdown's coming. I'll fill you in. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. Uh, let's see here. Bat Mad says, Invincible season finale already. They really screwed that show over by separating it into two halves. Look, Brian's eating a caramel Kit Kat, and he had to put a U.K. flag because that's the only place you can get it. I love, I love foreign candy. I, lo I told you, whenever I go to another country, I go to the supermarket and I go to the movie theater. I also like to go to department stores. I like to see how, what it's like to live there. And I, it's so fun. You should definitely do that when you travel. Jiko says, I have a brand meeting today. Ooh, look at you, at 4 p.m. So I'm going to relax before that meeting. That's awesome. That's good. Put yourself in a good mind space. Ben 10, bon nuit. It's becoming our tradition. Bon nuit, Ben. Matt says, having a cup of coffee and an apple from work in Michigan. Good for you. Lone Wolf says, just finished my shift here in Malaysia. I didn't know you were in Malaysia. That's awesome. And managed to catch the end of the stream while getting ready for bed. Ah, sweet dreams to you too, Lone Wolf. Ivan says, here in Mexico, watching for the first time X-Men animated series in the original The Omen to prepare for the first omen. Uh, there's no way that the new omen is as good. I'm not even going to review it. I just, I didn't want to go to the screening tonight. I got too much to do. Um, but the first omen's like a genuinely scary movie. I still remember seeing that for the first time. I have not rewatched it because it's too scary. Junior 6288 says, how early can you pre-order those new X-Men comics digitally? Oh, I don't know. You might be able to get them now. I don't even know when they're coming out for sure. I still go, get my Comixology comics. I love Comixology. Trisha, your food has arrived. Bon appetit. Danny says, working and enjoying the stream. Much love from Guatemala. Oh, it's always so nice to see you, Danny. And Mish has just got back from Godzilla X Kong, and it was so fun. Really missing blockbusters that are epic in scale. But I kept picturing Wanda and the Avengers popping in to save everybody from the kaiju destruction. Uh, hopefully we'll get a good Avengers movie again soon. And Elise says, apple cider in Canadian theaters. That's crazy. That's what a crazy drink for the theater, but very Canadian, eh? And then Omega Level Mutant says, I'm at work building predictive models, but would rather be drawing. Oh, that's so, that's such a cool, but that's so cool. I love learning about you guys and what you do and where you are. That's so cool. Happy 65 months to you too, Junior. I like your ruby badge. All right, everybody, now that I've made you hungry. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow, three streams a week. Uh, I'm taking Friday off, although I hope to have a video go up in the morning. But videos today, tomorrow, and of course, one more live stream. It'll be tomorrow, and it'll be late tomorrow because I have to wait till the stupid thing runs through the time. So tomorrow's live stream will be around 5 or 6. Maybe 5, 5.30. Maybe I'll split the difference because uh, I'm trying to make sure I have an evening. Dorothy, visiting your new grandchild in Texas. That must be really a delight. Congratulations. That's so exciting. I'm very happy for you, Dorothy. All right, so see you guys soon. I had another great time with you as always. Bye-bye.